Hello again. Last time we introduced the notion of cryptography. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that today and some notation. All right. So what, what is cryptography? Well, encryption and decryption are just functions applied to text which give other text. And so uh, we could use functional notation to talk about them. Remember last time we introduced the notions or the, the, the vocabulary ciphertext and plain text, plain text being the original message and ciphertext the encrypted message. Right. So the ciphertext is just this encryption algorithm, which is just a function applied to the plain text. And then the plain text is extracted by applying the decryption algorithm to the ciphertext. Um, and it should be the case that the decryption is the inverse of the encryption, so we can get the original message back. We're going to talk about uh, some, some cryptographic algorithms later, later on that don't have that property. For example, cryptographic hash functions, you can't extract the original text back. Okay, so this um, uh, often encryption and decryption use a key, K. And so we just add that as an additional parameter. Now, the key may be the same for encryption and decryption. And if so, we call that symmetric encryption. Most of the commercial algorithms that you hear about, like um, AES and DES and Bluefish and, uh, and others, are symmetric algorithms. But there are also asymmetric encryption algorithms that uses a different key for encryption and for decryption. And those are commonly called public key cryptosystems. An algorithm that doesn't use a key is called a keyless cipher. There aren't many of those around, but there are a few. Okay, so this notation, this functional notation, is, gets a bit cumbersome after a while. And so we often use a different notation. We use these curly brackets uh, and then the key as a subscript to denote both encryption and decryption. Remember, they're often the same algorithm. And so in particular, you know, if you have uh, the decryption of the encryption of, of P with some key and some other key, then we use this notation shown on the screen here. Um, and this just is, is uh, more compact and easier to, uh, to write. And also, it's very commonly used, particularly in cryptographic algorithms, uh, uh, cryptographic protocols. Okay. So what does a cryptanalyst do if you're trying to, to break an encryption scenario? Well, often you try to break a single message. E example, uh, the, the pirate message that we looked at uh, you know, a couple of slides back. Um, we might want to recognize patterns in encrypted messages. There's something called uh, traffic analysis. For example, you might find that when a crisis is going on, a particular entity is sending more messages. And so you might evaluate the, the traffic without knowing anything about the content. Uh, and that might give you some clues about the scenario. You might want to infer some meaning without breaking the algorithm. Same sort of thing. You might want to deduce the key. Well, that's a useful thing. So you can read any message that you, that you encounter. You might want to find implement or weaknesses in the implementation or the environment and the use of the encryption. So, for example, in World War II, um, the Germans had a very strong crypto machine called the Enigma machine, right? But they were careless about using it sometime and reused the key over several days. And then the British and the Americans were able to get a lot of leverage from that. You may want to find weaknesses in the algorithm without necessarily having intercepted any messages. So many uh, modern crypto algorithms are published and you can buy a book and, and, and read about them and you can try to figure out whether there are any weaknesses in the algorithm itself as opposed to the implementation of the algorithm. What does the cryptanalyst work with? Well, often they're working with uh, a bunch of encrypted messages and trying to figure out the content of those. They're also working with known encryption algorithms. So frequently, you may know what the algorithm is, but you may not know the key, and so you have to work a little harder to figure the, out what the content of the message is. Uh, often, you, you might have some plain text, ciphertext pairs. So for example, there was a scenario in which a particular embassy was sending out uh, innocuous messages, you know, um, what do they call them? Uh, Anyway, <laughs> uh, press reports, that's what I'm trying to think of, press reports. And then they would also send out that message to their headquarters encrypted. 
And so anybody that was paying careful attention would say, well, this is probably the encryption of this press report that these guys sent out yesterday. Uh, it may have um, known data items in the, in the, in the ciphertext. For example, if it's a diplomatic cable, it may have a standard heading that's always on top of it. And so you can use, use that to figure out, you know, that this, this probably uh, says, you know, to his majesty so-and-so, right? Mathematical and statistical tools and techniques, properties of languages, for example, the frequency of symbols in English or in another language, computers, ingenuity, luck. Okay, so we've said several times that encryption is designed to obscure the meaning of texts, uh, and any redundancy or regularity of the text that's preserved in the ciphertext can be used as a weapon by the attacker to try to figure out what that message is saying, and that's the ultimate goal. Thank you.